One of Us is Lying, Chapter 6, Knox, Saturday, February 22nd. I'm about to kill my sister. Sorry, Kirsten, but you're in my way. With a flick of my thumb on the controller, Kirsten's Bounty Wars avatar crumbles to the ground, blood gushing from her head. My sister blinks, fruitlessly pressing a few buttons, and turns to me with incredulous scowl. Did you just slit my throat? She glares at the television screen as Dax Reaper steps over her lifeless body. I thought we were working together. Our geriatric golden retriever, Frisch, Fritz, who has been half asleep at Kirsten's feet, lifts his head and let out a wheezy snort. We were, I say, taking one hand off my controller to scratch between Fritz's ears, but you outlived your usefulness. Dax agrees with me on screen. It's a good day for somebody to die, he growls, shaking his knife and flexing his muscles. Just not me. Kirsten makes a face. This game is vile and I'm starving. She's sitting next to me on her basement sofa and shifts closer to nudge the knee of with hers. Kirsten lives an hour away and doesn't usually spend her Saturdays with us, but the girlfriend is, teach is teaching in Japan for six weeks and she's at loose ends. Come on, pause. You're ridiculously buff. Alter ego and get some lunch with me. You mean my doppelganger, I say? The resemblance is uncanny. I put down my controller and flex one arm, then instantly wish I hadn't. What's the opposite of ridiculously buff? Pathetically sp spindly. Kirsten and I look the most alike of any of our siblings, down to our spiky short hair, but she has much better muscle tone from rowing crew on the weekends. Usually I try not to call attention to that fact. Kirsten ignores my sorry excuse for a joke. What are you in the mood to eat? She holds up her hand before I can speak. Please don't say fast food. I'm ancient, remember? I need a glass of wine and some vegetables. Kirsten is 30, the oldest of my four sisters, and they were all born right after the other. And my parents thought that they were done until I showed up a decade later. My sister treated me like a living doll for years, carrying me around so much that I didn't bother learning to walk until I was almost two. Wing zone, I say instantly. It's a Bayview institution, famous for its extra hot wings and giant inflatable chicken on the roof. Now that Bayview is getting trendy, new people are starting to grumble that the chicken is tacky and it doesn't fit the, down, the downtown aesthetic. Direct quote from a letter to the editor in last week's Bayview Blade. So the wing zone owners are downing, doubling down. On Valentine's Day, they strung a garland of blinking red neon hearts around his neck and hasn't come off. That's some professional level petty, and I'm all for it. Wing zone? Kirsten frowns as we head for the basement stairs. Fritz paddling behind us. Didn't I specifically request vegetables? They have celery sticks. Those don't count. They are 99% water. And coleslaw, 100% mayonnaise. The lemon peppered wings have citrus? There's a life lesson for you, Knox. Fake fruit flavoring is not, and never will be, a vegetable. Kirsten looks back at me as she opens the basement door, and I give her the kind of hopeful, integrating smile that works on absolutely nobody but my sisters. Ugh, oh, fine, she groans, but you owe me. Sure, I say. She's never gonna collect, though. That's the upside of having sisters who think they're your mom. Our basement opens to the kitchen, and we get upstairs. My dad is sitting at the table, hunched over in a paperwork. He looks a lot more like Dax Reaper than I do. Now that he owns his own company, Dad doesn't necessarily have to do hands-on construction work, but he still does, which makes him the most in shape guy for his 50s I know. He glances up and his eyes flick past me, the boring kid who still lives at home, and twinkle at Kirsten. Didn't know you were still here, he said to Fritz, who, always like my alpha male father, better than anybody, leans adoringly against his chair. She sighs. Knox wrote me into a video game hell. Dad frowns, because he thinks video games are a waste of time, as opposed to actual sports ball games, which he'd love for me to play. But he just waves the folder at he's holding at me and says, I'll leave this for you to take to work on Monday. What is it? I ask. A letter of intent. They're going to hire a couple of Genasio exineers. He says, I got a packet in the mail the other day from Until Proven. Great, except we didn't get it in the mail. I brought it home and put it on his desk with a note, which I guess he never even noticed. Kirsten beams, fantastic, Dad. Way to set an example for our local businesses. My father and Kirsten are strangely an amicable pair. He's this conservative, macho, old-school guy with somehow gets along better with my bleeding-heart lesbian sister than he does with any other 
anyone else, maybe because they're both athletic, take charge, and self-starter types. Well, it's worked out so far, Dad says, pushing the folder to one corner of the table. Nate's a good worker. And you know, he got A's in both classes we covered last semester. Kid's got a lot brighter future than he has credit for. I mean, he gets plenty of credit in this house, but okay. It's so great that you're doing that for him, Kirsten says, and the genuine warmth in your tone makes me feel like a prick. I don't have anything against Nate, but I can't shake the feeding, feeling that he's the son my daughter wished he had. I grab a sweatshirt from the chair where I dropped it earlier, pulling it on as Kirsten adds, Want to come to lunch, Dad? We're getting wings. She only grimaces a little at the last word. No thanks, I need to get back to work and finish our proposal for the mall parking garage. It's been sitting empty for much too long, and frankly, it's both an eyesore and a hazard. He frowns and turns back to me. One of my guys said he heard a rumor that kids have been cutting through the site. You seen anything like that, Knox? What? No, definitely not. I practically yell it way too loud and empathetically. God, my father makes me nervous. His frown deepens, and Kirsten hugs at my arm. All right, we're off. See you later. We are through the front door and halfway down the driveway before she speaks again. Work on your poker face, Knox, she mutters, pulling a set of keys out of her bag and aiming them at a silver Civic. And stop taking shortcuts through abandoned construction sites. It's a sunny but cool Saturday. I pull the hood of my sweatshirt up so I slide into the passenger seat. It was just a couple of times. Still, Kirsten says, climbing in beside me, it's my duty as your significantly older sibling to remind you how not safe that is. Consider yourself warned. She turns the motor, and we both wince as music blasts through the car at top volume. I always forget how loudly Kirsten plays her radio when she drives alone. Sorry, she says, turning it down. She glances into the rearview mirror and starts to back out of our driveway, so I barely got to talk to you during that creepy bounty hunter game. It's still bullshit that you killed me. By the way, not over it. But what's new with you? How's the job? How's the play? How's school? It's all good. Well, pretty good. She taps the blinker and prepares, and prepares to turn out into our road. Why only pretty good? I'm not sure where to start, but I don't have to because Kirsten's phone rings. Hang on, she says, her foot saw on the brakes as she roots through her bag. It's Katie, she says, handing me the phone. Put her on speaker, would you? I do, and Kirsten calls. Hey, Katie, I'm in the car with Knox. What's up? My second oldest sister's voice, Tinny from the speaker, starts ranting about something that's pink but was supposed to be a peach. Or maybe the other way around. Katie, stop, Kirsten says, inching into the main road that take us to Baby Center. I can't even understand you. Is this about flowers? Okay, Radzilla, let's take it down a few notches. I tune them out, unlocking my own phone with a prickle of anticipation, like everybody else at Bayview this week. I've been waiting for the next text from Unknown, but there's been nothing. i guessing whoever is their target decided to take their dare. And now, I don't know what to expect. It's new territory. Simon never bothered us with a kinds of gamesmanship. Is it wrong that I'm kind of, I don't know, interested? I shouldn't be after what happened to Phoebe, but not mentioning last year's month, month-long shit show. But there's a video game quality to that kind that has, to all of this, that kind of has me weirdly hooked. Like I could just block text from unknown and be done with it, but I don't. Hardly anyone at Bayview High has, as far as I can tell. What did Lucy Chen call us out at, at lunch the other day? A high-risk population, conditioned to response by the right kind of prompt, like overstimulated lab rats. Or lemmings. That was Simon's preferred term. A text from Maves pops up while I'm scrolling. Hey, a bunch of us are getting together Friday when Bronwyn's in town. You in? Maybe. Or play. Is it spring break? No, she's just here for the weekend. Ashton's bachelorette party, so we're seeing into the woods. She adds a grimacing emoji, and I send three of them back. I am already sick of that play, and we're still weeks away from performing it. My singing rage is microscopic, and I ended up with a lead role anyway because I'm one of the only guys in drama club. Now my throat hurts constantly from all the straining, plus rehearsals are messing with my until-proven work schedule. It's weird and kind of uncomfortable to realize you might have started outgrowing a thing that you used to be almost your whole life, especially if you're not sure what else to do with yourself. It's not like I'm tearing up at the school or work. My biggest contribu contribution uh, until proven is far, so far, is seconding Sandy's su suggestions for the conference room names, but I like it there. I'd enter more hours if I had the time. We're in downtown Bayview before Katie finally hangs up. Kirsten shoots me an apologetic glance as she 
pulled into the parking lot across from the street from Wing Zone. Sorry, we got interrupted by a quote, floral emergency, unquote. Which is not a thing. Would have, who would have you been texting while I was ignoring? Who have you been texting while I was ignoring you? Maeve, I say the battery on my phone is almost dead, so I shut it off and I put it back in my pocket. Ah, uh, Maeve, Kirsten sighs nostalg nostalgically. The one that got away. She pulls onto the spot and cuts the engine. From me, I mean. I was shipping you too hard. I had a couple name picked out for you and everything. Did I ever tell you that? It was it was Nave. I groan and I open the door. But you seem fine. Are you fine? Do you want to talk about it? She always asks that. I never accept. Of course I'm fine. We broke up a long time ago. We exit the car and head for the opening of the parking lot gate. I know, I know, Kirsten says. I just don't understand why. You guys were, like, perfect for each other. It's time like these that... As great as my sisters are, I kind of wish I had an older brother or a close guy friend who liked girls. Maeve and I weren't perfect, but it's not a conversation I know how to open up with Kirsten. I don't know how to open up with anyone. We're bottled off as friends, I say. Well, I think it's great that, um... Kirsten stops so suddenly I almost bump into her. What's with the crowd? Is it always busy? this busy on Saturday? We're within sight of the restaurant, and she's right. The sidewalk is packed. No, never, I say. And a guy in front of me turns at my voice. For a second, I don't recognize him because I've never seen him outside of school. But there's no mistaking Matthias Schroeder, even out of context. He looks like a scarecrow, tall and thin with baggy clothes, with blonde hair and strangely dark eyes. I find myself peering at them, too, closely, wondering if they're real or contact lenses. Hi, Knox, he said tonelessly. It's a chicken. Huh? I ask. Is he speaking in code? Am I supposed to reply, the crow flies at midnight or something? Kirsten waits expectantly, like I'm about to introduce her, but I don't know what to say. This is Matthias. He got suspended for copycatting Simon Keller's last fall. We've never spoken before. Awkward, right? Matthias points us upward toward with one long pale fing with one long pale finger. I follow his gaze to Wing Zone's roof, and then I can't believe it didn't notice it sooner. The inflatable chicken's red heart necklace is finally gone, and it, so is his head. Well, it's probably still there, but somebody's stuck what looks like the head of Bayview's wildcat mascot costume onto its neck. Now the whole thing was turned into some kind of freaky oversized cat chicken and can't look away. I snort, but choke off back a full-on laugh when I catch Kirsten's exasperated expression. Oh, for God's sake, she mutters. Why would someone do that? Yuppie revenge, I ask, but then immediately reject the idea. The kind of people who complain about the inflatable chicken lowering their real estate values aren't going to be any happier about this. You don't get it, Matthias asks. He looks hard at me, and God, the kid is weird. I can practically hear Maeve saying, he's just lonely, which might be true, but also true that he's weird. Sometimes things are related, is my point. My stomach growls. It knows we're close proximity to wings and not happy about the delay. Get what? I ask impatiently. Always take the dare, right? Matthias says. He gives me a stiff little salute and turns on his heels, slipping through the crowd. Kirsten looks mystified. What's his deal? Beats me, I say distractedly, pulling out my phone to turn it back on. There are two texts waiting from unknown. Dare. Put the Bayview Wildcat mascot's head into the wing zone chicken. Status. Achieved by Sean Murna Murdoch. Congratulations, Sean. Nice work. The second text comes with a photo of a wildcat slash chicken. Up close, it looked like it was taken by somebody standing right next to it. Everything around it is dark, which makes it think that the head swapping happened last night. But attention didn't reach critical mass until the wing zone lunchtime crowd appeared. More texts start piling from Bayview High kids responding to unknown. Nailed it. Haha, ha, I can't stop laughing. Epic of Sean. El Mayo. Disappointed claws at my gut. As soon as I moved to the Bayview in seventh in seventh grade, Sean, along with Brandon Rubber, made my life hell in a hilarious game of how many Knox books can we fit into our toilet. Even now, Sean likes to ask me how my fag hag sister is doing because he's a Neanderthal who doesn't know what his crap insults mean. If there's someone at Bayview I would have liked to see taken down by a peg by this game, it's him. But all, of it, but all of this is going to do is, well, is swell Sean's meathead even bigger. There are no consequences for guys like him and Brandon ever. Your phone is going nuts, Kirsten says. What are your friends talking about? I turn it off and shove it in my pocket, wishing I could shut it down all my useless rage that easily. 
It's just a stupid group texting out of control. I say, they're not my friends, and neither is unknown, which I should have known from the start, obviously, but now I really know it.